Jake Hayner and Spencer Rattler might generate the clicks, but it's Derek Carr who's got to go out there and generate wins for the New Orleans Saints. And so far, he's looking good in OTAs. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdet Nation and Houdet family? I am your host, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, your New Orleans Saints expert and credential member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints is a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network. And on today's episode of Locked on Saints, we're going to give you a quick recap, about 10, 15 minutes on all the things that we saw from OTAs today. As the New Orleans Saints are back out there for OTA day two, it's open to media, their fourth OTA. We'll take a look at two undrafted free agent defenders that are standing out over the course of OTAs already. Uh, the New Orleans Saints, then that new offense still finding ways to impress, especially with the way that Taysom Hill's been utilized. A.T. Perry still continuing to get it done and the run game looking like a lot of fun. And we're going to lead all of this off with our kickoff today. Derek Carr looking very comfortable and uh, all together just pretty clean in this new New Orleans Saints offense. We appreciate you very much as always for being an everydayer and for making us your first listen of the day every day here on the show. It's a part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode brought to you by friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On NFL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Once again, head over to the Game Time app today to save on your first tickets. All right. So, uh, look, I-, I get it. I understand. Jake Hayner, Spencer Rattler. It's what everybody wants to talk about when it comes to the quarterback position right now. And uh, we will, don't get me wrong, we're going to dive into that here today and as well as tomorrow morning's episode as well when we kind of dig in a little bit deeper on some of these topics. But uh, man, Derek Carr going eight for eight and running this offense like he's been in it before, uh, that's got to mean something. And that's what you might want as a Saints fan more than anything else because Jake Hayner and Spencer Rattler can perform as well as they want to over the course of OTAs, mini camps, mandatory mini camps, training camp, preseason, all that. Derek Carr is your starter. Derek Carr is the guy that's going to be out on the field. He's the one that's got to win this team games. And so he's probably the one that you want to look like or you want to see looking like he's very comfortable in the offense. And it certainly feels that way. Uh, after having a pretty good outing a couple of days ago or, or last week out there for OTAs, comes back again this week going eight for eight. Uh, one play, one pass you might say was actually a sack, um, by Carl Granderson, who beat Trevor Penning around the offensive right edge. Yes, Trevor Penning saw right tackle. We were out there today. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, Derek Carr just looked clean, looked comfortable. Like he's been in this offense before, uh, completed a pass on a great dig route over to A.T. Perry over the middle of the field. That was after A.T. Perry went into motion. We saw the Saints adding some more fun things to their offense as well, along with that motion. We'll break that down next. But I just really wanted to lead off today talking about Derek Carr looking good. And look, a lot of people are worried about saying things like, hey, Derek Carr looks good because they're worried that people are going to get mad at him. This is what you want, man. This is what you want. You need your starting quarterback to look good. He went four of four in his first four passes uh, during seven on sevens, hitting uh, a couple of shallow routes, but then also hitting a slant route and then hitting a deep pass down the seam to Taysom Hill, another guy we're going to highlight here in a little bit. Uh, as well, because Taysom Hill was all over the field for the New Orleans Saints during this OTA practice. So I'm saying comfort. I'm talking about efficiency. I'm talking about sharpness too. Connected with uh, with uh, Juwan Johnson on another pass out of uh, a quick motion and rotation that happened over there. Uh, caught um, Equinemia St. Brown wide open in the middle of the field at one point as well. Literally, nobody even around him. Just good route, good concepts, all that. Um, He just looked good and just is running the offense, getting in and out of the huddle. There was one false start with him at quarterback, another false start with Spencer Rattler at quarterback. No um, re-huddles at all today. So just clean, clean, comfortable, exactly what you want to see. Now, hopefully that type of precision, precision, efficiency, hopefully that type of efficiency, um, you, you just heard every gear in my brain just stall right there. That was awesome. Um, but look, I mean, efficiency, um, good decision-making, 
always finding the open guy. Like it, it was a good day for Derek Carr. I'm not ready to crown Derek Carr and say, all right, all the concerns from last year are now addressed. There's nothing to be worried about. We're not going that far. But hey, it, again, I, I've talked about building blocks, right? And putting, laying down the foundation. This was a good foundational day for Derek Carr, who looked really, really comfortable, really, really clean, really, really sharp throughout today's practice. Uh, he completed eight of eight passes on the day. Uh, Jake Hayner completed four of seven. And then Spencer Rattler competed just three of eight. Uh, two interceptions thrown as well. Both of them going to Miller Bradford, uh, the New Orleans Saints UDFA uh, safety, undrafted free agent safety coming out of TCU. So another rough day for uh, Jake Hayner. Uh, a solid, fa- or excuse me, another rough day for Spencer Rattler. My apologies. Uh, a solid to fair day for uh, Jake Hayner, who had another. Uh, big play as well on a nice completion down the left sideline to Jordan Mims on a kind of like a wheel route situation in seven on sevens. Uh, you know, uh, that competition is going to continue to be entertaining. It's going to continue to be fun. But right now, I, I would have to put Jake Hayner way, way ahead uh, as of right now for uh, that QB2 spot if it's going to one of those two uh, young guys. Nathan Peterman was present, did wear a helmet in uh, during the practice today which is unlike what happened last week. He had no helmet. He was just kind of standing off to the side and working with coaches and working with the quarterbacks. He still stood off to the side, worked with the coaches, worked with the quarterbacks. So it seems that the Saints are really invested in Jake Hayner and Spencer Rattler, but it could just be that Nathan Peterman might be coming back from something or something like that. Uh, Coming up next, let's take a look at some of the new things we're seeing in this New Orleans Saints offense, including something I have been so excited about and I've been pounding the table for since last year. Let's look at that as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by your friends at Game Time, your go-to destination for last-minute tickets. Nobody does last-minute tickets like Game Time. They got flash deals. They got zone deals. They got deals all the way up to the beginning of an event. Sometimes, even an hour after the event starts, I've found tickets for like a dollar, two dollars to some games that I wanted to go to, some events, comedy, theater, music, concerts, whatever it is that you're looking for, including the great sporting events going on. You got the NBA, Western, well, I guess all you got left now is the Eastern Conference. Oh no, the Western Conference finals. But now you kind of, you know, got the other stuff too with potential finals coming up, uh, matchups coming up. You got NHL playoffs going down. So if you're in any of those areas, game time, absolutely the place to go if you're looking for last minute tickets. Take all the guesswork out of buying your NBA and NHL finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On NFL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off of your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Today's episode of Locked On Saints also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I mentioned that the Dallas Mavericks. We're two-point favorites going up against the Minnesota Timberwolves in a previous episode. Now, that line has closed up a little bit. They're now one-and-a-half-point favorites. So you want to get in on that or any other of the you know big odds going on around the NBA, the NHL. You can even get into some early stuff in the NFL. There's a ton to choose from over at FanDuel. So go check them out today because it is winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL with the playoffs ongoing. And FanDuel is going to give you an opportunity to take home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets when they win any $5 bet. That's $150 bucks that you can then use on spreads, money lines, player props. You got the over-under for Derek Carr's passing yards, $34.50. He's going to go throw for more, throw for less. You can go ahead and dig into that when you win those $150 in bonus bets by winning your first $5 bet. Over at FanDuel.com, slash locked on. That's where you want to go to make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Let's get it, Houdat Nation. The New Orleans Saints new look offense is just simply a lot of fun to watch. And every week that we go back, we're seeing some new layers and some new elements added to this offense. And one of my favorites has finally found its way down to the Big Easy the cheat motion. I'll tell you all about that and why it's important. We got that coming up for you here throughout today's episode of Locked on Saints. Don't forget, we are your team every day. So I have a fresh episode for you tomorrow morning as well, diving a little bit deeper into more of these conversations as well. Want to know who had the biggest plays of the day? Want to know uh, which offensive linemen stood out? We're going to dive into a couple of UDFA standout defenders, but there were some UDFA standout offensive players as well. We're going to cover all of that 
in tomorrow's episode. But let me just give you some big news and notes that you should take away for today. So when it comes to the New Orleans Saints new look offense, we've seen a lot of motion, a lot of play action, a lot of rollouts. I I was talking with John Hendricks and, and you know, we were just watching it and counting it. We we're just like, geez, there's like motion or play action on every play with the exception of like maybe a handful throughout the day. I would safely say that now having attended mini camps and two OTA practices that I saw more motion in those three days than I have probably seen the Saints run in the last two years in game. And today there was something new added that it was only a matter of time, right? The NFL is a copycat league. Let's let's give up some applause for Mike Shanahan, give up a little bit more applause for Mike McDaniel over in uh, Miami because they're the guys that are kind of you know, the the predecessors when it comes to what I'm particularly about to talk about, but the cheat motion. If you've never heard of the cheat motion before, it's a motion in which somebody is lined up in the slot and somebody else is lined up on the outside. The guy in the slot goes in motion around the player on the outside, working his way towards the sideline, kind of gets a little bit of a running start. The ball is snapped and then they immediately take off upfield. So if you know anything about the Canadian Football League, the CFL, you know that receivers get the opportunity to start you know, a few yards back, run up to the line of scrimmage, and then the quarterback snaps the ball as they get to the line of scrimmage. It gives them a nice little head start in terms of getting to top speed and things like that. This cheat motion is a way that the Miami Dolphins, for instance, uh, use or something that they use to get Tyreek Hill up to full speed off the snap as opposed to him having to get to full speed running down the way. So Finally got to see that with a couple of different receivers. A.T. Perry ran it once. Bub Means ran it once. I'm sorry, Chris Olave ran it once. Bub Means ran it once. I imagine that Rashid Shahid would have run it as well if he were at practice today, but he was not at practice today. Just missed with an illness. But another fun wrinkle, another fun piece, and again, another competitive advantage that comes from utilizing pre-snap motion has now shown up in this New Orleans Saints offense. So uh, again, I'm not going to tell you this is going to win them games and that they're going to be a Super Bowl team or anything like that, but goodness gracious, these are the things that you wanted to see from this New Orleans Saints offense, and you're finally starting to see them. So very excited to see how they do that. I did mention that Rashid Shahid missed practice with illness. There was a key return to practice today, that of course being running back Jamal Williams. He had missed uh, the first week of practice or the first, I don't want to say the first week of OTAs, but he missed the first open OTA that we got to see um, and now uh, ended up being back for this practice. So it was great to see him back out there, see him doing both zone run and man run responsibilities, catching passes, doing a whole lot. So, um, you know, I'm I'm excited to see what a new Jamal Williams looks like in this offense, uh, depending on if he gets the opportunity. We'll see. Um, uh, another player that was gone that I don't think we're going to be seeing for a while uh, is Tano Passanio. So Tano Passanio missed last week, missed this week. This is the defensive lineman number 92 that can play outside and inside. Uh, unfortunately, he tore his Achilles, according to uh, Dennis Allen, during the offseason. So I'm not sure if it's something that happened at their facility or if this was another Noah Spence situation to where you know it took place away from the facility while you're training and trying to get ready for the season and stuff like that, or getting ready for the offseason, rather. Um, so I don't think we're going to see Tono Passanio for a little while. And that opens up an opportunity for a guy like Peyton Turner, who can also play inside and outside and has a lot to prove this season in a contract year where he had a lot of defensive ends ahead of him. But now there's all of a sudden an opening here where he could potentially find his way to the roster, needs to prove that he can be healthy, did not get his fifth year option picked up. So this year is kind of make it or break it for the young uh, pass rusher. So Maybe this opens up an opportunity for him to show, hey, I can do a little bit of the inside outside versatility stuff, and that might end up creating a little bit more of an opportunity uh, for him. Jalen Ford, the New Orleans Saints, uh, one one of the New Orleans Saints fifth round selections was back at practice today. So great to see him. He wasn't participating, but we saw him walking around. He was wearing a jersey, all those other things. He was kind of working off to the side, um, I would call it. Uh, Trevor Penning was still at right tackle. Taliesi Fuanga at left tackle. Nick Saldaveri took the entire day's snaps at left guard. Jonathan Abram took the entire day's snaps at strong safety. But it was another safety that stood out today. Two interceptions for TCU safety and undrafted free agent Millard Bradford. Uh, He comes in with a little bit of playmaking identity. Four interceptions in his career. 19 passes broken up of a column playmaking. Not necessarily ball hawking with those numbers, but um, looked like a ball hawk today. 
Uh, one pass from Spencer Rattler to Bub Means getting tipped up in the air by Lawrence Johnson, intercepted by uh, Millard Bradford off of the tip. Later on, and that was in seven on sevens, later on in team drills, Spencer Rattler, ill-advised throw downfield to Bub Means in double coverage, ends up coming up a little bit short on the throw. Millard Bradford picks it off underneath. So two big interceptions from Millard Bradford, definitely one of those two UDFA defender standouts today. The other, Isaiah Stahlbird, uh, excuse me, Isaiah Stahlbird, uh, the uh, safety turned linebacker from South Dakota State University. He had another tackle for a loss today. So you've seen him impact in the run game. And of course, he almost had an interception last week off of a really nice break on the ball in the short area of the field to Kyle Sheets. So really, really nice stuff from both of these guys who come in as UDFAs where typically you're looking at special teams being the place where they have to earn their stripes. But right now, you're seeing it over on defense. And finally, and trust me, we got much more. So just make sure you come back for tomorrow's episode. But in order to keep this brief, um, speaking of special teams, we got to see Charlie Smith kick today, five of five, going from extra point to 44 yard distance. So he was five for five today. We saw uh, Blake Groupie last week where he was seven of seven, pretty much the same range. But I got to tell you the velocity on Charlie Smith's kicks, the boom on them things. Uh, we're going to be talking about Charlie Smith all throughout training camp. I promise you that. And then Matthew Hayball had two different punts, maybe three different punts, over five seconds hang time by my personal stopwatch. Really impressive stuff for Matthew Hayball. So not only do I think we're going to have a kicker battle, but I think we're going to have a punter battle. And I've been saying it all off season so far, uh, but both of these guys looked really, really good today. Both of the guys that I would consider challengers coming in. So um, if you want to hear more about Trevor Penning's day, including uh, one play he wishes he could have back. A little bit more about Taliese Fuaga's day, including a play where he looked the part. And if you want to hear a little bit more about Taysom Hill, not just getting snaps at fullback, but getting snaps as the lone shotgun running back, make sure you're coming back for tomorrow's episode because we got all that and much more for you as we continue on with a full week here at Locked on Saints. We appreciate you very much as always, making us a part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints, in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you live and let me know how you mom and them. And trust you, that nation. I'll holla at you.